What is up, YouTube? I'm Devon DaVinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching DaVinci Reacts. Um, today is probably going to be the most controversial episode of Geography Now until I get to the Israel episode. So this is Geography Now, Republic of North Macedonia. See, I didn't know it was even split into two different um, republics. I thought it was just one, so I'm not going to get as much controversy or controversy as I thought I would. Okay, I gotta, I gotta figure out a way to spice up the controversy in this video. Okay, how about this? North Macedonia rules. The South Macedonia sucks. Go in the comment section and take with that what you will. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and check this out and see what it has to offer. I know nothing about Macedonia other than Alexander the Great may or may not have been a part of it. Again, comment section. Do what you will with it. <laughs> let's check this out and see what it has to offer. Before I, before I start, I forgot. Make sure you check out Geography Now. We'll have a link for them at the end of this video. The last 30 seconds, the icon will pop up. Click on it. It'll take you to their channel. You can watch their videos, like, subscribe, all the other good stuff. And if you feel like showing them support, the best way you can do it is watching their videos. What I would recommend, click the original link in the description box down below. Or right-click it, I mean. Open it in a new tab or something like that. Play the video in the background. Put it on mute. Let it play while you're watching this video. And then by the time this video is done, that video will be done as well. They'll get a view, they'll get ad revenue, and, you know, I get the same thing. So, I'll, I'll, everybody's good. <laughs> now, with that being said, let's check this out. All right, guys, this is going to be the most controversial video I've made since Armenia and Azerbaijan. As you know, we follow the uh, alphabet... Time, 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 time. What was the name of that other controversial country? Because I'm going to be checking that out at some point, too. All right, guys, this is going to be the most controversial video I've made since Armenia and Azerbaijan. As you Armenia and Azerbaijan. Did I butcher that last country? Well, I got two more on the list that I need to keep an eye out for. You know, we follow the alphabetical English list of countries in the UN. That being said, as the UN, EU, European Council, and NATO all give the same title for this country, this episode is going to go under F for former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. However, <laughs> I will refer to this country as the Republic of Macedonia as over 130 countries call it that on their own terms and because it's shorter and easier to say. Okay? Are we good? <laughs> cool? Who knows what type of landmine I just stepped on? It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. For those of you who know nothing about this country or why I'm trying to take so many precautions, basically all you have to know is that in almost every aspect, this place is actually pretty plain, simple, and chill. It's just the name that starts all the drama. <laughs> you might be wondering why. Well, we will explain in a bit, but first, Alexander, let's talk about where it is. Alexander, Alexander. <laughs> so, the Republic of Macedonia. Am I, am I good? I know you I know you don't like it, but can can you just at least maybe tolerate it if I just use that title for this video for abbreviated purposes? No problem. Please, just continue your lesson. Again, I'm going to keep saying Alexander the Great. I, for all I know, there's more to this whole thing between Greece and uh, Macedonia than just that. But if that is the only reason why there's this big divide, how great of a per... Well, I want to say great, because I'm pretty sure as a conqueror you have to do some shady things but how big of an influence does a person have to be for another territory to name the country that's in that area after <laughs> the area that the person that was so great died in like they named their country after that and the country that originates or they say that person originates from i'm going to take a neutral position in all this gets mad and starts a, a rivalry, which probably know has been going on for like a thousand years, or however long Macedonia has been. Well, they said it was part of the Republic of Yugoslavia, so it can't be that old. Unless I'm wrong about that, too. But imagine how big of a person you have to be for something like that to happen. I have no idea. I, I can't even think of, like, a, a, a reference that would make that... I don't. I can't think of a reference I would connect that to. Like, I don't know. That would be like. I, all I can do is sports. I'm sorry. <laughs> that would be like a basketball team naming themselves the Bulls because of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls get pissed off, and it's like no, jo Jordan wasn't with those Bulls. He was with these Bulls, and enough time goes by that people don't necessarily know which one he was with. I don't know. Me and my. Connection and am I trying to compare Michael Jordan with Alexander the Great? Yeah, did it work? 
Maybe not, but, you know, I tried. Thank you. So, the Republic of Macedonia is kind of like a country that got mixed up, tossed around, flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a moment just sitting right here to tell you how this country became a place with such an affair. Oh! High five! First of all, the country is landlocked and located in the Balkan Peninsula of Southeast Europe, surrounded by Bulgaria, songs. Greece, Albania, and depending on which side of this sovereignty debate you stand on, Kosovo and Serbia. Guys, it's the Balkans, Europe's most dysfunctional family. The country is divided into nine regions, with the capital Skopje located in the north-central part of the country, where a quarter of the entire population lives. It's also the historical birthplace of Mother Teresa, and in the city square, it has a statue of Alexander the Great. <laughs> Look, they immortalized Alexander the Great in their land. Oh, and they named their airport after him, too. <laughs> the country has only two main civilian airports, Skopje Alexander it. the Great International and Ohrid St. Paul the Apostle International by Lake Ohrid. Ohrid is a popular tourist and vacation spot. However, the second and third largest cities are Bitola, Kumanovo, in the northeast of Skopje. The E-75 High Highway is the longest and busiest road that traverses the entire country, north to south. Fun little side note, in the Republic of Macedonia, the sidewalks are actually used for both walking and parking. To this day- What the hell? No, no, seriously, Macedonia, what the hell? Like, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's like a, a Darwinistic law. If a, a normal people can probably see a car coming, some people that aren't paying attention, you know, like the type of people that like to walk and text, Maybe this is a way to, you know, population control. I don't know, but it, it sounds effective. <laughs> The legacy of the Ottoman times is well preserved in places like the Ghazi Hajar Kadi Mosque in Bitola. Tetovo is kind of like the Albanian capital of the country as it has the highest Albanian population in the country, adorned with geometric and floral motifs all over. In the west we reach the strange town slash micronation of Vevchani, which declared itself its own republic and even has its own currency called the Linchnik. Now if there's any structure that just straight up like dominates the that. landscape though, it would have to be monasteries, churches, fortresses, and mosques. I did four like this, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I made a four. Ones like St. John the Baptist Monastery, which supposedly has the forearm of St. John the Baptist embellished with extremely intricate wood carvings in the interior. The Kale Fortress in Skopje like and the Tsar Samuel Fortress in Ulfrid stick out too. So those are some of the most notable sites, but you're probably still wondering, okay, that's nice, but what does any of this have to do with the country's controversial name? We'll explain that in a little bit in the demographic section, but first, let's slowly keep you distracted from the inevitable rage fest by telling you more about the pretty mountains and rivers and stuff. Yes, let's go. <laughs> Go to geography. <laughs> All right, let's have one more round of plain objective fact reporting before the gray zone of doom comes up in the next section. In the simplest way I can put this, the country is about 80% mountainous and basically split in half by the longest river, the Vardar, that flows north to south and emptying in the Aegean Sea. On the west of the river, you have the Dinaric Alps with the tallest peak, Mount Korab, along the border of Albania. The general South Balkan region that the country lies on sits on the subduction zone between the European and African plates cut right in the Mediterranean. Therefore, the Republic of Macedonia is subject to some earthquake activity every so often. The Republic of Macedonia is famous for two things, tobacco and opium. The opium here is the national treasure, which has disputably the highest quality in the world with about 14 morphine units per specimen. Damn. Yeah, sorry, Afghanistan. Hang in there, though. You're doing good. The crop is mostly used for pharmaceuticals and transported all over Europe. Sure. There's also the Pesha Cave in Makadonski Brod, which is famous for looking like Helm's Deep in Lord of the Rings. Close by Skopje, you can't miss the Matka Valley with the canyons. Of course, the prize trophy of the country would have to be Lake Ulrid, one of the oldest and deepest lakes in Europe with over 200 different endemic species, including the Ulfrid trout, which is one of the national animals. Some national dishes include meat pie and Ivar relish made of crushed bell peppers and garlic, sometimes referred to as looks, vegetable looks caviar, cool. even though sometimes Serbians will say that they created it. And that's about it. Stay tuned. France is coming up next. <laughs> Nah. Oh yeah. You ain't getting away uh, with it how like did this that. Country get their whole name controversy dispute thing right. Uh oh boy. Well, uh Here we go. Here comes the train wreck. I'll do my best. <laughs> this is YouTube. You never avoid the train wreck. The train's coming no matter which way you try to take it. And sometimes the more you try to avoid it, the harder people will be on you for trying to avoid it because then you try to come off as pleasing too many crowds. So, I mean, if you're going to be a man that dies with integrity or without integrity, it's better to die with integrity. Pick a position, pick that hill, die on it nobly. Transition. Oh boy, this is gonna be just dandy. No matter what I say in any angle in this section, someone is gonna disagree and throw sharp objects at me. But this is my job, this is the life I chose. Come on, Barbie, you can do this. Just, hey, I, 
We haven't done a Bob Saget joke in a while. <laughs> Duh, I'm Bob Saget. I wear dad pants and I once sat on a pizza. Okay, first of all, the country has about 2 million people and was okay. the only former Yugoslav Republic to gain independence without any bloodshed. Mm. About 65% of the nation identifies as ethnically Macedonian and a quarter are Albanians and the rest are made up of groups like Turks, Romani, Serbs, and Bosniaks. The currency is also the Macedonian dinar. They use the CEF type outlets and they drive on the right side of the road. Now let's begin the discussion. First of all, what exactly are some distinguishing traits of people that identify as Macedonian. Well, for starters, just like we explained in the Bulgaria episode, they have Slavic roots and speak a Slavic-based language that is very similar to Bulgarian. Most people in both countries can understand each other just fine, Rusev, and many have Putria. relatives and family that live in each Rusev, other's countries. Matska. The people of this country have been tossed around over and over again in the past millennia, and it wasn't until the Balkan Wars that things really got cracking. For those of you who don't know, the Balkan Wars basically just went like this. Oh no, we don't like the Ottomans. Let's fight them. Yeah. What the? We had an agreement. You screwed it all up. You're all dead. And that's about it. Essentially, the area that takes up the parameters of modern day Republic of Macedonia were sort of the product of Yugoslavia after World War II. First, they were called Vardar Banovina, and then it became the Socialist Republic of Macedonia. To this day, Macedonians claim that they are descendants of Alexander the Great and the ancient Macedonians that were mixed in with the Slavic tribes that migrated into the area in the 6th century AD. I will say one thing. Alexander the Great was a conqueror. I'm pretty sure his empire stretched through that area. I'm pretty sure he probably had a couple ladies or two that were from that area that he probably had some fun with. It's possible he could have had kids. Now, I'm not saying that the root of his family tree or his bloodline comes from that area, but I'm willing to bet there are some branches that stretched out into that area at some point i'm willing to bet that that's the hill i'm willing to die on alexander got busy in the macedonian area do with me what you will Macedonia. To this day, Macedonians claim that they are descendants of Alexander the Great and the ancient Macedonians that were mixed in with the Slavic tribes that migrated into the area in the 6th century AD. Then in 1991, Yugoslavia broke up, and that was when the whole modern mess with Greece really heated up. I mean, it was already kind of heated before that, but this just made things a lot worse. To this day, Greece deliberately opposes the usage of the title Macedonia, as they claim the name is historically inseparable from Greek heritage, and they are the only ones that have the right to use the name, let alone the symbols. And shortly after they said that the republic of macedonia started to use the symbols yeah that yeah that's right no other countries if you if you originated a name it should stick with you forever you should never have to worry about that ever hey, again listen. Oh. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. Okay. Fuck yeah if if you have a name it should stick with the original maybe maybe not all the time it's not that it's not that big of a deal you know it's overrated sometimes, you know. I didn't really help the conflict. One thing that both Greeks and Macedonians can agree on is that historically, there was a region called Macedonia that expanded under Alexander the Great all the way from the Balkans to India. Where they disagree on is who the Macedonians and Alexander the Great really were, which, I'm gonna try my best, kind of went like this. <clears throat> you guys are constructing a narrative and appropriating our heritage and symbols and it all started with Tito. Macedonia is an inherently Greek title and you guys are not Greek, let alone Hellenistic in any way. Uh, we never claimed to be Greek and neither was Alexander the Great. He was ethnically Macedonian, Ooh. which was a separate distinct group apart from the Greeks, which mixed in with our Slavic forefathers after they arrived centuries later. Ooh. Dude, the Macedonians were Greeks. They spoke Greek, they had the same culture, they worshiped the same gods, they spread the Greek language across the empire. Alexander the Great was taught by Aristotle, they were Greek. Yeah. yeah, he spoke Greek. He also spoke Persian and a ton of other languages. And if they were Greek, why would they go to war with a ton of other Greek cities so often? He spoke the original Macedonian language first and then promulgated the Greek culture as it was seen as advantageous. Yeah. That's just a lie your leaders have told you to set a footing for future claims against Greek territory. Macedonia has been in the name of our North region for over 3,000 years with real Greek Macedonians today living in that area. Huh, yeah, that totally explains yeah. the actions of Giannis Metaxas in 1913. I knew you would bring that up. Look, I know that was tragic and horrible, but it's completely irrelevant to the actual documented, archaeologically corroborated historical facts that you can't deny. Huh. Then clearly you need a history lesson. No, you do! You do! You do! So, uh, guys, the Piran region... Ah! Disclaimer, this is pretty much just what the governments and radical nationalists say. Most of the general Greek and Macedonian populations don't even really care too much about this issue. To this day, the UN, EU... Isn't that the truth about all countries? <laughs> like, it's always the governments 
or the extremists that that get nuts. Whereas, whereas in like the country, there people are just thinking like, "Is there a sale on bread today? I need some bread. Where's the sale at? Oh, the other country that we have a problem with is in the news again. That's cool. Are there any sales? <laughs> That's pretty much how life in all countries work. Like, we just want to eat, you know, have fun. No, enjoy ourselves every once in a while. And as long as if anybody else isn't getting in the way of that, we're we're pretty much cool. The general Greek and Macedonian populations don't even really care too much about this issue. To this day, the UN, EU, European Council have all somewhat sided with Greece, agreeing to appoint the title former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Many Greek and Macedonian politicians have said that they would maybe be willing to settle on a new compound country name that deliberately distinguishes the country apart from the word Macedonia. Some suggestions include Slavo Macedonia, Upper Macedonia, or Northern Macedonia. But for now, the one that kind of unofficially stands at a somewhat not perfect but not too rage inciting national title is the Republic of Macedonia. Whew. So anyway, Macedonians love wrestling and handball. Wrestler Saban Thurstena being considered a national icon as he won a gold medal in 1984. The Men's Handball League made four appearances in the World Championships. Some notable Macedonians throughout history include poets Blaze Kineski, Kold Nedlkovski, <laughs> painter Peter Manzev, pianist Simon Turpczewski, oh, no. Academy Award nominated director Milcho Manchevski. And of course, even though she was ethnically Albanian, Mother Teresa was born in Skopje. All right, I think it's time to move uh, on. I Let's jump into diplomacy. Slick. You're a certain someone in that list. Well, as you can probably guess, the Republic of Macedonia is kind of surrounded by neighbors that all have some kind of issue with them. The general stereotype is that Serbia doesn't recognize their church, Bulgarians don't recognize their sovereignty, Albanians don't recognize the western border, and Greece... Yeah, you can kind of already guess. <laughs> However, it's a 21st century and the millennial generation really doesn't care too much about their grandparents' drama. Borders are totally open, people travel back and forth between these countries, and trade is consistent as long as you got a good bottle of Balkan wine to share. Serbians are generally close as their split from the Republic was the only one without bloodshed. Even though some political points are disputed, they're still yeah. cool. And Bulgaria is like the country where the Republic of Macedonia kind of sneaks into the EU through a loophole in the passport system, in which you can totally qualify if you have family in Bulgaria, which many Macedonians do. Turkey still gets along nicely with them, however, it's been favoring Albania and Kosovo a little bit more these days. They're best friends, however, and out of all the Macedonian geographies I asked, more or less, most of them agreed that Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina are probably their closest ally. These two countries all shared a deep history of being former Yugoslav Republic states that go way back. Have you ever had friends that you made while you were all being punished for something at the same time? Yeah, that's kind of how it is with these guys. They've seen so much struggle and hardship together and still managed to smile back at each other the entire time. Breakfast Club. <laughs> yeah, it's like Breakfast Club. In conclusion, just saying the word Macedonia incites a lot of opinions and- If it's like Breakfast Club, who would be the basket case? Who would be the jock? Who would be the nerd? Who would be the princess? And who would be the rebel out of those countries? Leave it in the comment section. It's like Breakfast Club. In conclusion, just saying the word Macedonia incites a lot of opinions and frustrations with certain groups of people. And I'm not gonna pretend like I have an answer to all this. The Balkans will always be indescribably complicated. It's just interesting how a simple name can cause so much uproar. Names matter. Let that be a lesson for you today. Restez à coute, France sera le prochain. Oh boy. I love having fun with some of the people in the comment section. Now, this could backfire tremendously on me because uh, last thing I want is to be one of those YouTubers that appear in some type of drama alert video <laughs> because of some shit that went down. <laughs> but um, yeah, I have fun with, you know, taking certain situations that I don't want to say are ridiculous, but. And I don't even want to say like a, a years from now we would be sitting back and laughing because apparently this beef has been going on for a long ass time. Well, no, it, it hasn't. Well, they said it, it has before, but it got bigger after the after Yugoslavia broke up. But yeah, like it seems to me like the battle is about, or not a, the battle, but the tension is between the name of the country because they don't want someone else uh, taking over or someone else uh, having that name because they wanted to be associated with uh, the territory in Greece. And I guess because of historical significance that it has, Alexander the Great is by many regards the greatest general of all time and people want that association with him. 
it's like, I guess it would be like if somebody tried to take Leonardo da Vinci's name. We're going to move on. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it seems like it's, a, it seems like I'm not in the position to really judge anything. I mean, first of all, why would you guys give a damn about my judgment? <laughs> but second of all, it seems like I would need more information before I can determine for myself whether or not this is a big deal or not. Because, I mean, obviously this is just a video that I'm making on my channel. That's all it, That's all that matters. My word means nothing compared to anybody else. Uh, you can give my word as much value as you want to give it. <laughs> hopefully, I don't know. If, hopefully y'all will be playing this like, on in parliament or wherever Macedonia happens to have governing them and you got this video playing with me <laughs> and on a big projectile screen trying to give us like playing it just to try to create some type of peace between Greece and Macedonia it would be epic but I hope the world isn't like that <laughs> but yeah um, but seriously though let me know in the comment section uh, a, a bigger detail about what's going on and try to keep it civil I don't I truly don't think that it'll get that serious um, yeah I, I really can't picture anybody getting in the comment section and going nuts but then again it is YouTube so I will probably have to monitor the comment section at least initially to make sure everything is civil and on the up and up and if you happen to get upset by this video just know My what what I have said isn't going to have any impact on your life whatsoever. The same way you woke up is gonna be the same way you go to sleep. All the things that have happened to your country, the significance, all that mean nothing. Or I don't mean means nothing, but my word <laughs> means nothing to the outcomes of those things. So you should be able to continue doing whatever you're doing and you know, try not to hurt anybody. <laughs> Unless, of course, there's like a, well, never mind. I was about to say, unless there's, of course, like a, a terrorist cell that's really extremist about this and they have, like, a picture of me as their insignia. That's the only way it would, I would, my word would have some type of impact. If that happens, let me know. I can try to, to make peace about, I can, I can settle that. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I'm Devon Da Vinci. Hopefully, you've just been a little more enlightened. And I hope that you enlighten me. Go in the comment section. Let me know what's going on. Again, there will be a link for the video, uh, the channel. Uh, geography now at the end of this video pop it right around here click it if you want to go check out more of the content and that's pretty much it i'm gonna give you the deuces i look forward to seeing you guys in a future video until then i'm signing out deuces <laughs>